Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Time has flown by and I can't believe we're already in mid-December. It's a cold and rainy winter here and I'm definitely wearing all my wool sweaters now. But first things first, we have to make some matcha. Then I can tell you about what I learned during art markets for a whole year. This year, I specifically focused on doing art markets. It was a growing year for me and I learned so much from these markets. Here are some of my learnings. Number one, scout out the market before signing up. If you've never participated in art markets before as a vendor, I highly recommend going to the art markets you're planning on attending to see what it's like. You can scout out who's selling there. Will there be other vendors who have similar work with you? What are the clientele vibes? What is the venue like? Like, is it indoors, outdoors, layout, etc. Sometimes it's not likely to do this because some markets only do a few times a year and you want to start right away. If that's the case, I would scout out their Instagram page for prior events, saved stories, and websites to see how much engagement they have, how many followers, and who are some of the prior vendors. I have definitely attended markets where I realized either the venue was not right, the traffic was not enough, or the clientele was not my type of customers. For example, maybe the customers were looking to find bargains or vintage clothing or non-handcrafted items. So of course, everyone's targeted audiences are different. Maybe you do need a different set of audience than mine. So definitely tailor the requirements to your own markets, uh, your own location and art medium. Number two, budget your market display spending. Now you've decided to participate in an art market and you will be understandably so excited to start preparing. It's definitely essential to get the right display and stand out from other vendors, but before buying the next beautiful display on Amazon, it's best to first figure out your needs. For example, like what is your table layout spaces and type of displays? I bought some acrylic step displays for my ceramic mug at the beginning. And I realized later on that most of my pieces are too big to fit onto those shelves. I still made it work, but I wish I had measured my work prior to purchasing the display shelves so I get something that's more useful and versatile. If you don't know where to start, um, I would start with some basic wooden crates from IKEA. I will link them in the description. You don't have to get them from IKEA. A lot of big box stores like Walmart, Home Depot, Sam's Club, Costco would carry them. They are great to carry your work, artwork in. The crates are in a neutral color so it doesn't take away from your artwork. And it also provides a height to boost your artwork to the customer's eye level. But if your artwork is different from ceramics, maybe it's glassware, maybe it's stationaries, you can use Pinterest to search for some art market displays to get some ideas. I would even sketch out what your display would look like and plan out the layout and sizing before buying anything.
Number three, keep track of your market revenues and expenses. This is semi-related to the point before about spending. Time is not a renewable resource, and if you'd like to scale up your business, spending hours in unproductive markets is not going to help anyone. In order to figure out objectively which market is better for you, you should track the income and expenses for each market. One of the things to do to become more financially aware is to start tracking your market revenues and expenses. It doesn't have to be complicated. All I do is I bring a little notebook with me during markets and I write down how much I paid for the booths and how much I made that day. At the end of the year, I can look back and evaluate which markets I'd like to do again next year and which ones I'd like to eliminate. While we talk about expenses, I have a side note. Towards the end of this year, I realized that I did something wrong at the beginning. So I switched my card reader from Square to Shopify Neither are sponsoring my video, but because my website is with Shopify, so I can easily track and update inventory if I use the Shopify card reader as well. If you are just setting up your art business, getting the card reader that matches with your website might be something to consider. Number four, have a variety of price points of products for your booth. When you have multiple price points, it's more likely you will get more sales. Sometimes people come to your booth and they love your work, but they won't necessarily want to spend a lot of money, which is fine. At the beginning of me trying out our markets, I only had mugs. They were about $35, $45 a piece. And as I did more art markets, I introduced stickers and fridge magnets, which are at a lower price point, $5 to $10 range. I also introduced intricate pieces at a higher price range, about $55 to $65, for different customers to choose from. Having multiple price ranges really helped showcase what I can do with ceramics, as well as give people a chance to choose what they want to spend at my booth. I find people are more willing to come over and talk about my ceramics when I have a variety of things on the table as well. I have a couple more learnings on my blog post, which I'll link down below because I didn't want this video to be super long. Ultimately, though, you won't know what your preferences are until you try a few markets. I'd consider these booth fees that you use to try markets would be necessary expenses to start in the field. Take these tips with a grain of salt and tailor them to your own needs and preferences. Now I wanted to update you on my recent adventures. I took two weeks off in end of November and beginning of December to visit Costa Rica. During that time, I did some snorkeling for the very first time off um, a small island called the Cano Island on the Pacific Ocean. We saw really big sea turtles, giant stingrays, friendly sharks, and sea urchins, pufferfish, coral reefs, and so many beautiful tropical fishes. 
the ocean is so blue there. Although towards the end, I did get a little seasick, but it was totally worth it. I hope everyone is winding down a little at the end of the year and having some time to relax before the holidays. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time. Bye.